morning, Mr. West. Third class, London Bridge. Single or return? Oh, it doesn't matter. Single. Quickly. Quickly. from the train. Yeah, look at his head. You nip back to the station, tell him what happened. I'll stay here. It's a real pea super. Nothing in the paper, Watson? No, there's a, another revolution in South America, possible war in Africa, nothing of interest to you. No. The London criminal is certainly a dull fellow. The thief or the murderer could roam London on a day like this, as the tiger does the jungle, unseen until he pounces, and then evident only to his victim. There are numerous petty thefts. Now, this great and somber stage is set for something more worthy than that. It is fortunate for the community that I am not a criminal. It is indeed. It's as well they don't have fogs in the Latin countries, the countries of assassination. Are you, Mr. Holmes? Thank you. Mr. Holmes. Yes, I know. I apologize for the state of my room. Oh, what next? My brother, Mycroft, is coming round. Oh, why not? Why not? <laughs> as if you met a tram car coming down a country lane. Mycroft has his lines and he runs on them. Pall Mall Lodgings, the Diogenes Club, Whitehall, that's his cycle. Once, only once has he ever been here. I mean, what upheaval can possibly have derailed him? I must see you over Cadogan West coming at once. Cadogan West, I... I've heard the name. It of course, nothing to my mind. Mycroft breaking out in this erratic fashion. It's extraordinary. Watson, you do know what Mycroft is. I seem to remember at the time of that affair, the Greek interpreter, you told me that he had some small office under the British government. <laughs> I didn't know you quite so well in those days. His position is unique. He's made it for himself. There's never been anything like it before, nor will be again. He has the tidiest and most orderly brain, with the greatest capacity for storing facts of any man living. The conclusions of every government department are passed to him. He is the central exchange which makes out the balance. All other men are specialists. His specialism is omniscience. Time and time again, Mycroft's word has decided national policy. Oh, then Jupiter himself is descending upon us today. Yes, indeed. No trace of the Duggan West. West. I have it. Yes, Cadogan West. Cadogan West was the young man who was found dead on the underground. 
on Tuesday morning. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It was a featureless case, as I remember. Young man killed falling from a moving train, no robbery, no violence. Watson. Brother Micro. Oh. That looks like our old friend Inspector Bradstreet. Why should he be a policeman with him? Ah, here we are. Mm. Kedug and West. Clerk at the Woolwich Arsenal, 27, unmarried. Government employee, but hold the link with my brother Mycroft. <laughs> Sherlock! Mycroft! Ah! Doctor! Uh, Watson. Watson. You know uh, Bradstreet. Oh, Mr. Dr. Watson. The Duggan West. The most annoying business, Sherlock. I extremely dislike altering my habits, but the powers that be would brook no denial. In the present state of Siam, it's most awkward I should be away from the office. But it is a real crisis, Sherlock. I've never seen the Prime Minister so upset. And as to the Admiralty, oh, buzzing like an overturned beehive. Do sit down, Bradstreet. Well, there's nothing unusual reported in the newspapers. I should hope not. The wretched youth had the plans of the Bruce Partington submarine in his pocket. Well, you must have heard of it. Only by name. Its importance can hardly be exaggerated. It has been the most closely guarded of all government secrets. You may take it from me that naval warfare becomes impossible within the radius of a Bruce Partington operation. So what sort of plans are we talking about? Extremely intricate ones, Sherlock. Some 30 different patents, each one essential to the working of the home. Where are the plans normally kept? In an elaborate safe in a confidential office adjoining the arsenal at Woolwich with burglar-proof doors and windows. If the chief constructor of the Navy himself desired to consult the plans, he would have to go to Woolwich to do so. To think they should turn up in the pocket of a dead junior clerk in the heart of London is simply awful. Then you recovered the papers? No, Sherlock, no, that's the pinch. We have not. Some ten papers were taken from Woolwich. Only seven were found in the pocket of Gadug and West. The other three are missing, gone, vanished, stolen. You must drop everything, Sherlock. Never mind your usual petty puzzles of the police courts. This is a real international crisis that you have to solve. Well, there are some points of interest in the case, I suppose. I'll be pleased to look into it. Ah! <laughs> Bradstreet, now, who held the keys to that safe? There are two sets of keys. Sir James Walter holds one set. He is the actual official guardian of the papers. A man grown grey in the service of the state. A favoured guest in the most exalted houses. His patriotism is above suspicion. And the other keys? A uh, Mr. Sidney Johnson, a senior clerk and draftsman. A silent, morose man, not popular, but a hard worker. His wife corroborates his account of the matter. He was at home the whole of Monday night, and the keys never left the watch chain upon which they hang. What sort of fellow was this man, West? Hot-headed. Rather impetuous. His duties brought him into daily contact with the plans. Who locked them up that night? Johnson, the senior clerk. And yet they were found on the person of the junior clerk. Well, I mean, that seems final, does it not? Yes, but why would he take them? If you think of any reason why he should take them up to London, except to sell them. Nope. We must take that as our working hypothesis. West could only have done this with false keys. He opens the safe, takes out the papers, goes up to London to see a foreign agent. He has to have them back before morning, or the loss will be discovered. He took away ten, seven were in his pocket. What became of the other three? He certainly wouldn't leave them of his own free will. It all seems perfectly clear to me. As you say, Mr. Holmes, West stole the plans in order to sell them. He met the agent, but they could not agree as to a price. So West returned home again, but the agent followed him. In the train, the agent murdered him, took the more essential papers, and threw the body from the railway carriage. Now, that would explain everything, would it not? It's good. It's very good, Bradstreet. The theory holds together. 
But if that is so, the case is at an end. On the one hand, the traitor is dead. On the other, the plans of the Bruce Partington submarine are presumably somewhere on the continent. I mean, what is there for me to do? To act, Sherlock. To act. All my instincts are against this explanation. And yours too, I think. We are not brothers for nothing. Use your powers. Go to the scene. Question the people concerned. Leave no stone unturned. In all your career, you'll never have a greater chance of serving your country. If you, on your part, will be kind enough to send me a complete list of foreign spies and international agents known to be in England and their full address. Either we, on our part, can begin our investigation by a visit to Holgate Station. That's it. Watson! This is Hudson! Good evening! When was the body found? Near enough to six o'clock, sir, Tuesday morning. He must have fallen from a train sometime Monday night. Have the carriages been examined for any signs of violence? No such trace of violence has been found. A report of a door found over there. We can tell the approximate time that he entered the train from his ticket. There was no ticket on the body. That is really very singular. In my experience, it is not possible to reach the platform of the Metropolitan Line without exhibiting one's ticket. Is that not so? Quite correct, sir. Surely the... The murderer would have removed the ticket before throwing West from the train so as not to reveal the name of the station nearest his place of residence. I think the doctor has it. What else did he have in his possession besides the fatal papers and no ticket? Usual things. Pocketbook, note case, checkbook. Oh, and uh, two tickets for the dress circle of the Woolwich Theatre for that very evening. It appears that West was to have attended the performance in the company of his fiancée, Miss Violet Westbury. Hmm. She was the last person to see him alive on the fatal night. They were walking to the theatre together in the fog when he suddenly left her. Suddenly, without explanation? No. There appears to be no bleeding on the line. Well, there is hardly any trace of blood to be found. As I gather, there was a considerable wound consistent with a man falling from a moving train. Well, it was a terrible thing to see, sir. The head was knocked right in and the bone crushed. And yet, there was no great external injury. Everyone would expect some blood. Well, the line runs northeast. Yes, the track divides here, sir. And there's a branch line goes south under the river to rather higher than New Cross. The points. The points. I suppose there are no great number of points in a system such as this. Well, there are very few, sir. Points. And a go. Oh, by Jove. If it were only so. What is it? Oh, do you have a clue? Well, no, it's an idea, Bradstreet. An indication, though. But the case certainly grows in interest. Did you know? And yet, why not? <laughs> Cut! There is material here, Watson. There is scope. I was dull indeed not to see its possibilities. Now I confess it's dark to me. And to me also. But I now have hold of an idea which may lead us far. Now, I think Sir James, the guardian of the plans, claims our first attention. Plumstead Hall! Well, Holmes? Your idea? Oh, yes. The man West was killed not by falling or being thrown from a moving train. He met his death elsewhere, and his body was on the roof of the carriage. On the roof? Well, consider the facts. Is it a coincidence that the body was found in the very place where the train breaks and sways as it comes round on the points? The sudden slowing would affect no object inside the carriage, but an object such as a body on the roof. 
And there's a question of the mound. Of course, there was no bleeding on the line if the body bled elsewhere. Each fact is suggestive in itself. Together they have a cumulative force. Yes, and, and the ticket too. That would explain the absence of the ticket. Watson, it all fits together. Gentlemen, thank you, Baines. Thank you, sir. If you follow me, the body is upstairs. But wait, one moment. Are you not the undertakers? Excuse me, Sir James. I am Dr. Watson, and um, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Good heavens. We are helping the authorities in the case of the missing papers. And my brother... Sir James Walter died this morning. I am Colonel Valentine Walter. Please, gentlemen, come here. We are very sorry, sir. Thank you. I'm afraid it has been a great shock. But May I ask, how did your brother die? It was this horrible scandal. My brother is... My brother was a man of very sensitive honour. He was fiercely proud of the efficiency of his department. The theft of the plans was a crushing blow. It broke his heart. We were hoping Sir James might have been able to help. I assure you, it was as much a mystery to him as it is to all of us. Naturally, he had no doubt that West was guilty, but why he should have done such a thing? Now, of course, we shall never know. So, you can throw no light on the matter? Me? I'm afraid I know nothing save what I've read or heard. And you never met Cadogan West? No, no, I have not been back in the country long. My brother's work was of a highly confidential nature. He did not discuss it with me. Gentlemen, I do not wish to seem discourteous, but we are much disturbed at present. I must ask you to hasten this interview to an end. Of course. Mr. Salinger, of course, you so much trouble. Mm -hmm. That's an unexpected development. Heart failure. Suicide. Now for Miss Westbury. Is that the dead man's fiance? Yes. explain it, Mr. Holmes. I haven't closed my eyes since the tragedy. Thinking and thinking and thinking what the true meaning of it can be. Do sit down. Arthur was the most single-minded, chivalrous, patriotic man on earth. He would have cut off his right hand rather than sell a state secret confided to his keeping. It's absurd. Impossible. Preposterous to anyone who knew him. No. The facts, Miss Westby. Was he in want of money? No. His needs were very simple. And his salary was sufficient. He'd saved a few hundreds. And we were to marry at the new year. Was there any sign of mental excitement? Come, Miss Westby. Be absolutely frank with us. 
I had a feeling there was something on his mind. For long? Only the last week or two. Once I asked him about it. It is too serious to speak about even to you, he said. Go on, Miss Westbury. I mean, even if it seems to tell against him. We cannot say what it may lead us. He spoke one evening about a... a secret. I think he said that no doubt foreign spies would pay a great deal to have it. He said that we were slack about such matters and they would, it would be easy for a traitor to get hold of the plans. Oh, Mr. Holmes, if you could only, only save his honor. It was so much to him. Well, I'll do what I can. Now, please tell us about that last evening. It was Monday night, and we were to go to the theater. Violet, I'm afraid I've got to leave you. Leave me? It's very, very important. I'm sorry. You'd better go home. Go home immediately. Please. Was just here, Mr. Holmes. And he disappeared without any explanation? Yes. You are sure this is the exact spot? Yes. We often used to meet here when we were courting. You see, that's the building where he used to work. Ah. That was the last time I saw him. Oh, Watson, would you be so kind as to take Miss Westbury home in the car? Disorganized. West dead. Now the, the chief dead. Our papers stolen. And yet, when I closed this office on Monday evening, we were as efficient as any in the service. At what hour was the office closed on Monday? At five. Did you close it? I'm always the last man out. Is there no night watchman to the building? There is. But he has other departments to look after as well. He's uh, an old soldier. The most trustworthy man. He didn't see anything that evening. Thank you. When you closed the office, where were the plans? In that safe. I put them there myself. If Cadog and West wished to enter the office after hours, he would need three keys with an art before he could reach these papers. Yes. Key to the outer door, key to the office, I got the key of the safe. And only you and Sir James Walter had those keys? Yes, indeed. Sir James kept all three keys on one ring. They never left him. And, of course, your keys never left your possession? Never. Sir, if Cadogan West is the culprit, he must have had duplicates. Oh, he's the culprit, all right. It's dreadful to think that West, of all people, should have done such a thing. You're sure of his guilt? I see no other way. He was getting married. He wanted the money. Oh, yes. He's your man. Mr. Johnson, if someone desired to sell the plans, surely it'd be easier to make copies 
than to take the originals. It would need considerable technical knowledge. May I see these? And, of course, you and West and Sir James Walter had that knowledge. That may be so, but don't try to drag me into this matter, Mr. Holmes. The plans were found on West. It is certainly singular that he should risk taking the originals when he could have safely taken copies. Perhaps it was a matter of time. Ah, yes, a time. Now, three plans are missing, I understand. They are the vital ones. That is so. Now, someone holding those three papers, I mean, could they construct a Bruce Partington submarine? I told the Admiralty that I thought it was possible, yeah. but today I'm not so sure. These all-important double valves with the automatic self-adjusting slots are drawn only on this plan, which has been returned. Would you be so kind as to close those window shutters exactly as they were on Monday night? Window shutters, certainly. Thank you so much. Yes. No, I think I'll take a little stroll outside. Oh, please don't trouble yourself. I can find my own way. Please wait. Holmes? Watson. Look at this. The bushes have been broken. Now look at the windows behind me. The shutters don't meet in the centre. As you say, don't meet. Interesting, don't you think? Eight fifteen to London Bridge. Yes, that was it. I'm sure of it. You definitely recognised him as Cadogan West. Oh yes, definitely. I knew him well, sir. He was an old acquaintance. Hardly a week went by that we didn't pass a time of day together. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I was saying to the wife only on Sunday night. No, I'm a liar. It was Saturday. I said, there's no safer railway than the London Metropolitan. Did Mr. West seem to be following anyone? Not that I saw, uh, Mr. Holmes. But then I don't see everything. There was really thick fog that night. But one thing I will say. Mr. West wasn't his usual self. He was nervous, excited. I tell you, this gentleman, his hand was shaking so bad, I even had to open pick up his change. Well, I mean, that speaks for itself, doesn't it? That would... Our train. Forgive us. Come on. Come in. Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Yes? Uh, whilst you were away, a message came for you from the government. From the government? An official gentleman in a special carriage. He said, I wasn't to let this out of my sight until I placed it into your own hands. Mrs. Hudson, you are a most faithful watchdog. Oh. That's my brother Mycroft. He writes like a drunken crab. You'd better read it. Doctors are more used to hieroglyphics than normal human beings. Oh, can't read the first bit. Something about small fry and very big affair. Ah, here we are. Only men worth considering 
Adolf Meyer. 13 Great George Street. Doubt it's him. Not his style. Oh, Mrs. Hudson! Louis. Louis. Louis La Lafayette. Camden Mansion, Notting Hill. No, no, that's another old friend, Mrs. Hudson. You're hideously in the way. I'm sorry, sir, but I only have one pair of hats. Now, please disappear. Right, was. Ah, Hugo Oberstein, 13 Caulfield Gardens, Kensington. Uh, known to be in town on Monday, now reported to have left. The cabinet awaits your final report with the utmost anxiety. The whole force of the state is at your back if you should need it. Mycroft. All the Queen's horses and all the Queen's men cannot avail us in this matter. <laughs> Gardens. Well, well. What have you found? Things are turning a little in our direction. You know, I really believe that we're going to bring it off after all. <laughs> I'm going out. When will you be back? I've no idea, but I promise I will do nothing serious without my trusted comrade and biographer at my elbow. Off the Gloucester Road. Uh, I just hope you'll be careful, that's all. You're not as young as you were. We you know what Mr. Holmes is like once he gets the bit between his teeth. I do indeed. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Hudson. Good night, Doctor. Something to eat? Yes, indeed. And have a coffee and a cure, sir. Signor Galdini! Another coffee and a cure, sir, please, my friend. Uh, try one of the proprietor cigars. There's nothing like as poisonous as one would expect. Oh, thank you. Now, now, for our plan of action. It is evident to you, Watson, that the body was placed on the roof of the carriage. Or dropped from a bridge? No, that's impossible. Placed. The carriage roofs are rounded with no rails. How could he be placed there? In some areas, the London Underground runs clear of tunnels and past the backs of houses. When I found that a leading international agent lived in just such a house, you know, I was so pleased that you were a little astonished at my sudden frivolity. Hugo Oberstein, 13 Corfield Gardens, of course. Exactly. I was able to satisfy myself that not only do the backstair windows open onto the line, but that owing to the intersection of the Richmond and Wimbledon lines with the Circle line near Gloucester Road Station, the trains are frequently held motionless at that very spot. But that's splendid. You, you've got it. The house appears to be unoccupied. Oberstein obviously having gone abroad to dispose of his booty. He has no reason to fear a warrant. And a spot of amateur burglary would never occur to him. But that is precisely what we are about to do. Uh, why? Um, why? For what purpose? We cannot tell what correspondence may be there. No, no, I... No, I don't like it, Holmes. You can keep watch. I'll do the criminal part. This is no time to stick at trifles. Think of the Admiralty. Think of the Cabinet. Think of the exalted person herself who waits for news. We're bound to go. Ah! 
I knew you wouldn't shrink at the last. Serious proposition, locked and bolted. We may do better in the area. Ah, this is better. Jimmy. Don't touch us. Look where they rested the body. Blood. Blood again. I cannot agree with you. The moment I conceived the idea of the body on the roof of the train, the rest was inevitable. And major difficulties are before. So obviously, untidy in his habits, take the trouble to burn old newspapers. Probably trying to start a fire. God, there's no, there's no wood, no coal. Let me see.
What is it? Well done. Well done, indeed. I think we have our man. Would you look in the agony column of the two remaining copies of the Daily Telegraph, and I think you will find a message from someone calling himself Piero. Piero, Piero, Piero. Ah, here we are. Hope to hear sooner. Terms agreed, but must have full report. Matter presses signed Piero. And the last. Yes, by Jove. Monday night after nine, two taps, only ourselves. Payment in hard cash when goods delivered. Signed Piero, just like the other one. Every paper has a message from someone calling himself Piero. It's an odd name for a villain like Oberstein to use. If only we could get the man at the other end. Watson, quickly. We haven't a moment to lose. Read the papers. Where are we going? The offices of the Daily Telegraph. We've just time. Splendid, Sherlock. Splendid. I always said you'd make the best cat burglar in London, if you put your mind to it. Can't do these things in the force, Mr. Holmes. No wonder you sometimes get results that are beyond us. Some of these days you'll go too far. And you and your friend will find yourselves in trouble. England home and beauty, eh, Watson? <laughs> Martyrs on the altar of our country. The, the, the agony column of the Daily Telegraph. What do you really make of those? Have you seen the advertisement from Piero today? Tonight, same hour, same place, two taps, most vitally important, your own safety at stake, signed Piero. By George, if he answers that, we've got him. You can write me down as an ass, Watson. This is not the bird I was expecting. Who is he? Colonel Valentine Walter, Sir James's younger brother. I'll begin to see how the cards fall now. What is this? I came here to visit Mr. Oberstein. I know you, surely. Sherlock Holmes. Everything is known, Colonel. How an English gentleman could behave in such a manner is beyond comprehension. We know of your relations and correspondence with Oberstein, how you stole your brother's keys and had them duplicated. We know you went to Admiralty office on Monday night and was seen by Cadogan West, leaving all his private concerns being the good citizen that he was. He followed you closely in the fog, halfway across London, until you reached this very house. It was then, Colonel Walter, that to treason you added the terrible crime of murder. I did not. I did not, before God. I swear I did not. Then tell us how Arthur Cadogan West met his end before you placed his body on the roof of the railway carriage. He followed me, as you describe. But until I was at the very door of this house, I did not know it. papers.
He hit his head on the marble floor. He was dead in a matter of minutes. It was Oberstein's idea to stuff the less important plans in West's pocket and put him on the roof of the train. What made you turn traitor, Colonel? A stock exchange debt had to be paid. I needed the money badly. Oberstein offered me 5,000. It was to save myself from ruin and disgrace. My brother used to discuss matters with me which he probably should not have done. This submarine, for instance. How could he ever guess his own brother would betray him? That was the worst of all. He suspected me, I know he did. I read it in his eyes. And after this West business, he never held up his head again. Can you not make reparation? Hmm? To ease your conscience and possibly your punishment. What reparation can I make? Where is Oberstein with the papers? I do not know. He said that letters to the Hotel du Louvre in Paris would reach him. Ah. Well, well then it is possible for you to help us. Come and sit down and write to my dictation. Dear sir, in regard to our transaction, you have now observed that one essential detail is missing, but I have a tracing that will make it complete. Is that true, Sherlock? Quite true. What essential detail is missing? The double vowels. An automatic self-adjusting slots. Good heavens, how on earth did you know that? I've become quite a submarine expert, brother by. Now, Colonel, what would be your terms? I must ask you for a further 500 pounds. English notes, please. I shall expect to meet you. No, we can hardly say here. Another star was suspected of trap. The foyer of the Charing Cross Hotel. Its proximity to the railway station renders it extremely popular amongst the international spy fraternity. Yeah. Did you get that, Colonel? Noon, Saturday next. I should be very much surprised if that does not fetch our man. Splendid, Bradstreet. But our traitor has flown. Well, I'll be damned the cheek of the feather. Good way, gentlemen. I'm keeping him on a long lead. There's an R in the month. And the Diogenes Club has the most excellent oysters. I should like both you gentlemen to be my guests. 
Aber warum, Sherlock? 